Joining me is Erin Johnson, staff forester with Oklahoma Forestry Service. Well, Erin, I know that one of your main programs that you work with is the Oklahoma Forestry Stewardship Program. Tell me a little bit about that. The Oklahoma Forest Stewardship Program is a program that is partially funded by the U.S. Forest Service, and it helps landowners manage their property. Mm -hmm. um, it's a program that encourages them to um, look at their land and get a management plan put on it so that they can um, meet their objectives for the land. And is this available to for any type of land use or is it restricted to conservation or any particular this use? This is actually um, for private landowners mm -hmm. um, and it's um, primarily focusing on forested habitats. Mm -hmm. It can be for a number of objectives depending on what the landowner is wanting to manage their property for. It could be for recreational purposes, it could be for commercial um, forest land, it could be um, an investment property, it could be for wildlife, it okay. could be... A lot of options, yeah. wonderful. Well, and this happens to be one of the properties you've been working with. Tell me about this site. This property is 53 acres. Um, it's located in the center of Oklahoma City, not too far from the highway, mm -hmm. and there's a river just on the north side of the property. Um, it actually has a variety of forest types. Mm -hmm. If you look up on this hill, there's the cross timbers, which is primarily post oak and blackjack oak. Yes. And then as you move down into the bottomland hardwoods, you'll um, closer to the river is where the riparian area is, which is a different. Um, you you see a different variety of trees um, than what you find up on the uplands. Yeah, it's a really wonderfully diverse property. Now, one of the things you do is work with the homeowners to identify what they're goals are and then offer them management strategies. Yeah, we, um, depending on what their, their goals are on the property, we um, come out to their property and have an initial visit and kind of determine what they're wanting to manage their land for. And then um, we go from that and, and give them um, the best forest management practices they can um, do to um, manage their property for their, their their typical goals, which for this property, it was primarily to be able to see wildlife, to be able mm -hmm. to enjoy um, just the aesthetics and beauty of the forest um, and for recreational purposes. Well, I've no noticed a number of uh, little deer prints as we've been walking yeah, this site. You'll actually <laughs> see a lot of wildlife out on this mm -hmm. property. We've seen some turkey and some deer and bobcat. Um, it's, it's kind of a unique thing uh, mm -hmm. to see in the middle of Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. Well, we're standing in a drainage channel, and this is uh, one of the challenges the homeowners faced in managing this site. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, this mm -hmm. was actually slotted to be channelized and put mm -hmm. into concrete. Can you imagine what this would look like <laughs> if it was all concrete? But they, w they worked with the city of Oklahoma City to maintain the natural tree cover um, and put more of a grassland mm -hmm. with um, the riparian forest intact. Um, rather than having it completely concreted all the way down to the um, river. And then I've noticed up here you've planted some trees that can really tolerate a periodical they've, flooding. Yeah, they've planted um, quite a bit of bald cypress, mm -hmm. um, which does well on a variety of soil types. Mm -hmm. um, and they've also planted some maples, but kind of in a, a floodplain area that mm -hmm. if, if the waters were to rise, they would be able to handle that. Now, another challenge I've seen out here is all the privet. <laughs> yes. I know that out in this area around us, they've taken a lot of effort to remove that. Yeah, they, um, this property was covered, and you, you can still see it when you go into some of the um, thicker forested areas, but it was covered in privet, and they have worked to um, actually hand remove oh, most amazing. of this privet. Um, it's... It is an invasive species that, that has come typically from the urban areas because it was planted in people's front yards. It's a horticultural and has moved plant. In. Yeah. And if the land's not managed, you know, if there's no mowing or mechanical um, management going on, the, the privet will encroach yeah. and take over the property. Wow. And then it will also um, start to compete with some of the nat native trees. And when it competes, um, it really puts these trees under stress. You can see they have a really yep. narrow crown because of that. Yep. Well that's something for the rest of us homeowners to think about uh, when we're selecting plants for our gardens is to avoid those invasive plant species. Yes, definitely. 
Well, Aaron, this is really a remarkable site. Thank you so much for sharing it. Now, this is quite a, a large urban forest, but I know you work with smaller property owners as well. We do work with um, a variety of landowners and the smallest acre for the forest stewardship program is a 10 acre tract. Um, there are a few exceptions for that, but um, landowners can call us or get more information about the forest stewardship program on our website at forestry.ok.gov or they can give us a call at our office. Um, we do have foresters located across the entire state. Mm -hmm. Um, so all 77 counties can get assistance from our service foresters and district foresters. Well, this is certainly a wonderful program. Thank you so much. Thank you.